Good day, everyone. This is Dawn Numdu at Food Film Zanzi. Uh, great to be here again on Food Film Zanzi TV. Um, and I am joined today by the Senior Manager for Agribusiness, Berti Haman from Standard Bank. Um, today, we're chatting about something that some of you might not be very, very keen to chat about, but it's the awkward B word. Um, and it's about budgeting for success. Uh, Berti, welcome to Food Film Zanzi. We've heard you on the Farmers Inside Track podcast, but you're joining me now um, on Food Film Zanzi TV. How have you been? Um, I'm very good. Thank you, Don. Thanks for asking. And hello to all the listeners and viewers as well. I think it's a privilege and honor for me to be here. And hopefully I can share a couple of thoughts with you that can make you feel or think a bit different about a big B, you know, as you refer to it, <laughs> which I think, you know, is very important. And it can make, it might be make a bit of a difference in your, in your business, in your farming venture. No, definitely. Since I started talking to you, Berti, um, I've had to give, an, give a lot of thought to what I'm doing in my budgeting. Um, and I'm sure our farmers will benefit as well and everyone else listening to, to, this, to this interview. Um, now, Berti, what is budget planning? Um, maybe you can just start there. What are some of the benefits, especially for farmers? Thanks, Dunya. I think a lot of people probably have got a vague idea of what it's all about. And maybe some of you are better at it than others, you know, but, you know, I've, I've written a couple of notes here. So let's see what um, I think, you know, there's various definitions of a budget um, and, and different people can maybe look at it slightly different. But in its simplest form, um, a budget can be described as an estimate of income and expenses over a future period, for example, the next month, uh, you, you know, the next production season or the next year. So for me, the important thing of a budget is that it's forward looking and it's based on various assumptions, which is very important. Now, these assumptions will, for example, include when you will be spending money on what you will be spending money and how you will be spending the money to generate a future revenue. I think if done correctly, a budget should empower a farmer to make smart production and financial decisions. In terms of preparing for a budget, you know, what do I need to know and what are the assumptions when it comes to budgeting? Um, I, I think there's, there's various assumptions that you will have to, to make. Um, the important thing for, for, for me as a budget is that empower the, the farmer to make informed decisions. Um, and, and, and if I can maybe just focus on the, on the benefits of, the, of, 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 a, of a budget. A budget can create focus and discipline, and it will therefore eliminate wasteful spending, which can catch up to one very, very soon um, if you don't budget. Um, it can also serve as an early warning sign to the farmer to take remedial action. For example, if, he, if his budget shows that he's going to be running into a cash flow deficit, he can maybe arrange a bridging loan to cover that. So that's useful for that purpose as well. And then also, if you prepare your budget and you see your expenses exceed your revenue, um, that's a big warning sign. But it then also um, highlights the possibilities for you to change your business model, become profitable and sustainable again. So, so those are all the benefits um, of, of, of budgeting, which I think is really important. So when you prepare your budget, there's going to be various assumptions you have to make. Now, management accountants will tell you that there are various types of budgets, and they are absolutely correct, but I think for our purposes today, we're going to simplify this whole thing, and we're going to maybe focus on two types of budgets. One is a production budget, and the other one is the cash flow budget. Now, before I get to all of that, um, there's maybe just one or two pointers I want to show um, and point out to the, to the listeners there. Um, one point to remember is that a budget invariably start with what you will be spending um, and based on the spending what revenue can be uh, can be generated in other words don't start with your revenue and then put in your spending it starts with spending first and then you get your revenue then you when you do your budget start with what you know or what is the least uncertain um, so in other words the least case work earlier on right um, another point to remember is the recent past is obviously a good indicator of what can be expected in the near future and then lastly, a budget should have a very specific objective, as this is what you set out to achieve. So, so those are maybe just a couple of pointers when you have to keep in mind when you do your budget. Now, you start with your production budget. And the production budget is where you pin down all your objectives and corresponding inputs. For example, here we don't refer to financial numbers in the production budget. Here we only refer to quantities or volumes, that type of thing. If you went construction, think about it as, for example, a bill of quantities. Right, so no, no financial numbers, just quantities. If you were, for example, a maize farmer, your objective can be, for example, to plant 500 hectares of white maize and record a yield of 4.5 tons per hectare. So that's your, that's your objective you want to achieve. 
Now, based on this objective and your knowledge and skills as a farmer, you must now make various assumptions to achieve this objective of yours. For example, how much seed must I, must I buy? How much pesticides and fertilizer must I get? What will be my labor requirement? Um, you, you know, those are all the, all the inputs that you have to put into your, your, your production budget. Now, when you do your production budget, it's very important to have some kind of benchmark in place, right, or in mind. For example, um, if you are a maize farmer somewhere in Northwest, try to benchmark your inputs against what you know is the norms for the region. How much fertilizer would you normally put in in this region? So that means that you're more or less moving in line with what you think is, is actually possible to achieve. Now, once your production budget is done, you want to focus on your cash flow budget. But we will have to make a couple of adjustments first. The adjustments we have to make is on the production budget, we're only talking about quantities. And the cash flow budget, we want to talk about rent amounts. So now what we need to do is we need to assign a unit cost to all of our, 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 um, our production budget. For example, you may have budgeted that you need 500 bags of seed. Now you carefully negotiate with your seed provider and he gets you a price of 3,000 rand a bag. So now you do the conversion 500 bags of seed times the 3,000 rand per bag. And that will be then your budget that you put into your cash flow budget um, with regards to your seed. So if you've done that conversion, it's now a good time to do a bit of a reality check. Um, compare your budget and the cost per unit on a line for line basis with what you've achieved in the past. And I think, you know, it's a good indicator if you are less than 7% out from, you know, previous experience, it is maybe a, 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 a accurate budget, but if you deviate more than 7% from the past, it's maybe a good idea to go and have a look why you're actually making that difference. So once you've done that conver conversion, you can do your cash flow budget. The important thing here is to accurately allocate all your expenses to the correct time period, accounting for any trade finance that you may, for example, or trade credit you may. This is very important because if you um, allocate your expenses incorrectly, um, you will underestimate or overestimate your requirement for bridging finance. Then also remember to account for all your expenses. And these expenses include your interest expenses, um, your personal drawings, and also your income tax expenses. So make sure that you account for everything. Now you can again do a reality check. Um, compare your budget expenses line for line with your previous year. And again, try to rationally explain why your budget does you deviate so much from the previous year. And now it's time to bring in your revenue. Now, based on your objective to obtain 4.5 tons per hectare the yield, um, now you must use your latest maize price, or the price, maize price you're very confident you will be achieving, and then see how much revenue you will be achieving. Be careful not to use a maize price that's too optimistic or too conservative, because this will hide weaknesses in your, in your budget. The final stage is now to carefully reflect on the financial result of your budget. Remember, you had an objective to plant 500 hectares of white maize and achieve a yield of 4.5 tons per hectare. Now you can get a financial result. Um, and based on, on, on all your assumptions, are you satisfied with your financial result? Now, if you are not, don't just try and tweak your budget. Go back to your, your objective. Because maybe it's worthwhile to say, okay, I must maybe achieve a yield that's more or less than 4.5 tons per hectare. Is it possible to achieve a yield of 5 tons per hectare with a little more input? And, they, and then you start to change all your assumptions around that objective again. So, so those are some of the assumptions you will have to go through when you prepare your budget. Yeah, Berti, um, I know farmers are extremely busy and uh, you've given us a clear indication of what needs to be done. Um, obviously, they, they have a lot to do and farmers wear many hats and this is one aspect of it. So very important to focus on your budget and to plan ahead. Um, but farmers often have to deal with the unexpected expenses. Um, what happens if you exceed the budget and, and how can they turn back and, and move away from that? Yeah, that's the awkward situation, Don. Um, and unfortunately, it happens. Um, I must say, in my 25 years in banking, I've never seen a budget squaring off perfectly. Um, so that, that doesn't normally happen. And of course, that's also not the objective. Um, but of course, if you prepare a prudent budget, um, the chances of deviations is, is maybe a bit less. Um, but maybe there's two salient points I can highlight in this regard. A budget is a reiterative process. That means that you budget, and then you account. What I mean by that is you must compare your monthly budget and the end of the month with your actuals. 
and then see where there was any any deviations. Um, again, if there was a deviation um, uh, for, for a good reason to exp that you can explain, that's perfectly acceptable. But of course, you know, if there's a deviation because you just forgot about a certain thing to budget for, that's a bit of a bit of a problem. Um, so, for example, if you budgeted to achieve an objective of 4.5 uh, tons per hectare and you bought more seed because you changed your objective, that could be a bit of a problem because, you know, with the change of objective can, comes a whole lot of other things that one need to take into account as well. So, so that's maybe some of the stuff I need to take into account. And then also, um, if you deviate from your budget because it was maybe a bit of ill discipline, that can also be a problem. Um, if you didn't budget to buy a tractor, and now there was a bargain and you go and buy your tractor, and because of that you deviate from your budget, you know, that can make people a bit frown on you as well. So, so be careful and be disciplined around those things. Um, but if you exceed your budget, that's not the end of the world. Um, the reason for the excess is actually the more important thing. Um, remember, your, the reason for, for, for budgeting in the first place is to create discipline. So, so stick to your budget as far as you can. Um, but if you do exceed your budget, try to explain the differences. And, you know, it's a lot of planning that you need to put in. It's time, it's effort to put the budget together. Um, when will farmers start seeing results? When will I start seeing results once I start my planning, once I, I'm disciplined in my practice, but I'm not really seeing anything changing? When will I see results? I suppose the results can come in different sizes and shapes and forms. Um, so, so maybe there's an a, a angle that I want to point out here. Um, if you prepare a prudent budget, you will most likely feel a bit more confident and you will farm with purpose. You know where you're heading because you've got an objective and you've got a plan to get there. Um, now, because you know what's required, um, you can anticipate the challenges and you can be better prepared when those challenges actually come along. So that's one of the, re the benefits of for, for budget, you know, to be, to be prepared. You're going to be feel less intimidated, you know, when, you, when the challenges do arise. So, so that benefit is fairly instantaneous. Uh, you know, you put in effort and you get that benefit quite quickly. But by its very nature, farming is a long-term venture. Um, your best bet is probably to be a bit conservative, but also be realistic, right? If you consider the benefit of compounding, it may be better pro to progress steadily than moving from a record high year to a record low year. And your budget will assist you to progress in a steady, steady manner. And also the results you seek is relative to your longer term goals. Eh? You must keep that in mind. So if you, if you, for example, plant 500 hectares today and your objective is to plant 700 hectares in five years time, you must accept that you will have to reinvest all your profits back into your farming venture, which reduces your personal disposable income. So in practice, therefore, you may not feel that you're actually achieving much success. So, so, so be realistic um, and understand what you're actually trying to achieve. So be mindful in a way um, what you are trying to achieve and measure your results against these objectives. And that is why you, you will budget. Yeah, our dear farmers definitely um, need to take note here um, and, and think about the long-term benefits. And, and I'm sure that many of them do. Um, Berti, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Senior Manager for Agribusiness at Standard Bank. Um, this is a part of a series that we're doing um, and we're looking forward to our engagements moving forward. Um, what can we look forward to next week? I think next week we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, uh, and that is cash flow versus profit. You know, sometimes farmers feel that they are, you, you know, making lots of money and the accountant, you know, um, have a different view. Or sometimes farmers are, you know, feeling down because they're not making money and also the accountant is having a different view. So, so we're going to be talking about cash flow versus profits. And if people would like to contact you and find out more information or just connect with you about all things budgeting um, and other advice, how can they reach you? Um, Dawn, they can go and look at the Standbank website. Our agribusiness have got a portal in there and where our contact details are. So they're welcome to go through that. Or otherwise, they can just go to the nearest relationship manager. Thank you so much, Berti Haman, Senior Manager for Agribusiness at Standard Bank. It was great chatting to you today on Food from Zanzi TV. Uh, we look forward to hearing your next podcast and our next engagement in the near future. Thank you so much, Berti, and have a lovely day, Father. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.